it slowed down as far as people um, uh, as far as people logging in. So um, Heather, Tim, Eric, if you guys want to get started, and I'll just keep an eye and see if other people uh, join us as we go. Well, oh, Mary, do you have our icebreaker? Actually, I do. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought of this today. Um, uh -oh. So what do these three things have in common? A boxing glove? Um, wait a minute. Um, a boxing glove, a crossword puzzle, and a Bible. It's something Scout related. It's a riddle. Anybody know the answer? Raise your hand. Don't forget to unmute. Uncle. <laughs> a boxing glove, crossword puzzle, and a Bible. Keeping yourself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. <laughs> what up, Bob? What up, Bob? Oh, <laughs> wow. All right. Thank All right. you. <laughs> With that icebreaker, we're ready to go now. <laughs> well, my name's Tim Fuendes. Um I'm a scoutmaster in the Red Arrow District, but this is our third fireside chat here tonight that just to talk about virtual scouting and it kind of its purpose and why we have kind of encouraged it. Um, obviously with COVID, we've all been kind of cooped up at home. And, and one of the things that has happened is called social distancing. And um, we don't know that that really applies to scouting as far as um, keeping ourselves separated from our fellow scouters. Well, physical distance is important. Social, social distance is probably something that doesn't help or encourage our scouting program at all. So we've been trying to encourage people to have virtual meetings and keeping in contact with their units, uh, getting the kids involved with activities among themselves and with either as dens or as patrols, but also to keep everybody kind of connected with each other. Um, and we've done, a lot of people have done a lot of things. So tonight we're gonna share some of those ideas. Um, how many have been to this before? Raise a hands. Okay. So we may skip over some parts and make them quicker and other parts we may spend a little bit more time on just because we want to uh, kind of make sure that we cover things and then also see how people are doing. If you've been to ones before, then maybe you wanna see what, or hear what other people are doing. So. We're gonna start out with that. Um, and I think we'll move over to Cortland with Zoom Basics. And that's basically hey. how to use Zoom. Very good. I'll watch Thank the you. waiting room while you're doing that. All right, appreciate it. Um, so I, I, I'm not gonna spend a great deal of time on, on Zoom Basics. Um, I think uh, several of you have already been in meetings or hosted meetings, uh, but there are still just, it's always worth uh, reiterating a few of those key things. And if you've got some specific questions uh, about getting started, if you haven't, or even just signing up for an account, um, I'll cover a few of those things right now. Um, so the first thing that I want to do, let me share uh, share my screen. I'm going to move, move everybody over here for just a second. Um, so let me share with you the uh, Zoom, make sure I'm on the right, yep, uh, the Zoom landing page. Um, so for those of you who maybe haven't um, haven't logged in or, or haven't ever looked at the Zoom landing page, maybe you've just clicked on the link to go to a meeting like, like you did tonight. Um, getting started with Zoom is, is actually a relatively simple process. Um, you'll see up there at the top, the uh, web address is zoom.us. Um, and like so many other pages, you've got sign-ins and you know pricing and things like that. Um, the council has had an account for a few months, uh, so I'll go and sign in. Um, if, if you want to do a free account, uh, you can do that. Uh, free accounts are the most limited, and I'll show you what the different breakdowns are here in just a second. Uh, but Zoom does have a free option for you. Um, we, do, we do have a council account, as I said, so let me go and sign in here real quick. So this will bring me, um, it, typically it'll bring you to your profile page. Um, this is what mine looks like. 
mine landed on the meeting page because I have it also open running this meeting right now. So, uh, so you'll land on, uh, on a profile page um, and it's got, you know, just your basic information here. Um, as far as the plans and pricing, like I said, there's a free op there's a free option. We'll look at those first uh, real quick. Uh, so as you can see, there's a free option. Um, you can host up to 100 people. Uh, there is a time limit on those meetings. It's 40 minutes. Uh, one of the nice things about those is if they time out, you can just start that meeting back over with the same link you already had. Um, pretty, pretty simple and easy. If you have yourself and two other people, up to three people, um, well, I guess they've changed that, it looks like now, unlimited one-to-one -one meetings. So, I mean, those can run as long as you want them. Uh, but anything, you know, with more, more people, you've got that 40-minute time limit. Um, I think a lot of our units have kind of opted for this pro level right now. It's, again, the same, go away. It's that same uh, 100 participants. Meetings can last up to 24 hours. Um, you've got recording ability, uh, you've got some other things, and you've got several different uh, things that you can add on if you so choose. Uh, this, this is probably the smartest and the best option for uh, units. Uh, 15 bucks a month, uh, you can purchase additional host accounts if, if you need to. Um, you start to get up into these and, and you're talking, you know, larger corporations, schools, you know, lots of different things going on there. Uh, so that's just a little rundown on their prices and, and things like that. So let me go back to uh, my profile here real quick. I'll just, uh, I'll just share quickly that um, I was able to Google a coupon code for Zoom and I was able to get my um, unlimited account for $12. Oh. And I just signed up for a monthly account. It did renew at the new month, and it gave me that $12 rate again. So, um, so I've had it for two months now at $12. Very good. Uh, Save some money. Thank you, Heather. Appreciate that. That's great. So, um, so you're, you're into your account, uh, and it's time to start scheduling a, a DEN meeting, a troop meeting, something like that. So if you click on meetings, um, it's pretty easy. You've got a big blue button here that says schedule a new meeting. I uh, click on that. You can put in your topic, if you can spell correctly, um, spell correctly, um, schedule your time, uh, you know, whenever you want to do that. It, we'll just, we're not going to actually save this meeting. How long is it going to be? Um, we'll just leave it at an hour. You have an option if you have a recurring meeting. So if your den meeting is every week on, you know, Wednesday at 7, uh, you can change those change those options there. Um, you can set it out for a number of current, a lot like so many calendar applications. Um, this registration can be a really unique feature. Uh, we've started using it more in, in, in at the council level. What the registration does, similar to this meeting right here, um, when you require registration, rather than sending out a straight link itself, uh, it, it it, it generates a link that you would send to people for them to tell you you want to attend. Uh, and it allows people, it allows the moderator of, of that account to either accept or deny um, your participation in that meeting. Once you've been accepted, you'll get the email back that says, here's the meeting link. Uh, sometimes you can add questions like we have with this one, uh, stuff like that. So. Uh, and that's, it's pretty easy as you start to just play around and figure it out to, to learn that. Uh, the meeting ID, I always generate an automatic ID. I don't, I don't use my personal meeting ID really for any meetings. Uh, it's, it's a randomly generated 11 digit number. The meeting password, you can change that to words, letters. Um, I just leave the six digit number in there and it's fine. Um, if you want to have everybody log on, without video going, you can turn it off. I always try to turn it on. And then you've got different meeting options down here. Um, enable waiting room is automatic on all uh, Zoom meetings at this point now. Uh, that way the host can see anybody who's coming in. If, they, if they're not familiar with the name, the ID, uh, they can not let that person in or, or try to message that person to see who are you, should I let you in if you're using a different login or something like that. Um, if you don't want people, you know, chatting right away, uh, you can mute people right upon entry. They'll have the option to uh, unmute themselves and, and start chatting. Breakout rooms, we'll do that a little bit with that, but you can pre-assign those, or 
you can assign them as people are logging in. Uh, and then every Zoom meeting has the ability to be recorded. Uh, you can choose to do that automatically, or once you start a meeting, you can just click a record button as a host uh, and go from there. Once you've got all that, those are the basics. Click save, your meeting scheduled. Once you generate that link, you can send that out to your participants. Um, the uh, the last couple thing, uh, the last thing that I just kind of want to hit on again uh, when it comes to uh, Zoom. Uh, meetings. Let me get out of that. Um, from a from a safety uh, a, a perspective, Zoom's gotten a lot better than three months ago when we all started this. Um, but it is still something you want to make sure that 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 you keep in mind. Uh, probably the biggest thing that is important to remember is that uh, youth protection policies still are in place during Zoom meetings. Uh, so there shouldn't be any one-on-one -on -one adult, uh, adult, adult youth contact. You always wanna have too deep leadership. Uh, one of the things that I think a lot of people have started practicing and, and been very successful with is that as the youth are logging into the DEN meeting, uh, the troop meeting or something like that, having a parent there with them um, as they log in is, is a good thing. And, and having a parent, you know, maybe somewhere in that room or maybe the next room over who can hear and, and check in on their, on their son or daughter who's participating in, in, in the meeting uh, is, is something to have. One of the other things that's always good to do uh, is to make sure that you as, as an adult leader maybe are the host um, of, of the meeting. Make sure a second adult is the first person that you let in to that meeting uh, before you start letting any of your youth into the meeting. Uh, so you've already, you've already got the two adults in there ready to go in that Zoom meeting. Um, one of the other things, um, you know, we are recording this meeting um, and that is permissible under um, uh, BSA um, uh, rules and regulations. We can record meetings among adults. However, we should not be recording any meetings that involve youth. Um, you just, uh, it, for, for youth protection uh, policies, uh, that, that should not be happening. Um, so please make sure that you are not recording meetings uh, that include any of your youth. So it's it's important to note on that point that 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 is a longstanding yeah uh, requirement of, of of youth protection. This isn't something new for the virtual age, but that we're not recording youth in activities has been uh, part of our youth protection training long before we started doing our things virtual like this. Yeah. So that's just an extension of the same. Nope, perfect. We've Thanks. had that question come up with people said, well, why can't we if we want to show them something later? Yeah. Well, the same thing applies to videotaping uh, camp ups. You really shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, so um, I see, uh, I'll answer this one question here from Donald. If you set up a repeating meeting, do you always have to invite them every week or can you set up without inviting each time? Uh, similar to an Outlook uh, or a Google uh, appointment that you would set that might be recurring, once they've accepted that for every recurrence, it will show up in their calendar. It'll use the same uh, meeting ID, link, and password. Uh, so, so they're good to go uh, from, from that point forward. So uh, hopefully that answers your question, uh, Donald. And one of the other things that's really nice to know of, about Zoom is we scheduled this meeting to happen at 7.30. Um, I actually logged in a couple hours ago just to test a couple things. Um, it recorded it just fine. I got my things set up there and lo and behold, we used the exact same link. It recorded just the exact same way. So you can actually repeat using uh, different meeting links as well. So it's not like it's it's one and done. Uh, once you've got that meeting ID set, it's, it's available to you uh, for, for future use pretty much till the end of time, so. A lot of cool features with Zoom that are available. I would imagine several of the other platforms are, are similar to that, um, but I would tell you I'm, I'm most familiar with Zoom. Um, I know that some some of our leaders are using Google Google Classroom. I, I've never been on that, and we have used a Google Classroom for one of our uh, online merit badges. We're actually still doing that right now, if I remember correctly. Um, so there's a lot of options out there, but Zoom is probably by far. Uh, the most prevalent and that's why we want to spend a little bit of time um, on Zoom itself. So unless there's any other questions, um, I'll go ahead and turn the floor back over to our much more qualified volunteers to continue uh, leading the chat and um, I'll play kind of moderator from here.
So as Corlin said, there are other ones. There's Google Meets, there's Teen, Microsoft Teams, there's a few other ones. I've been on a few of them and I will agree that the, the Zoom seems to offer the best opportunities. Um, probably the second that is maybe uh, Microsoft, um, but this is really, a lot of people have used it. Uh, having the reoccurring numbers is easy because you just give that to your troop once. And if they know Monday night at seven o'clock is a meeting, they don't, they still have that number. They can still continue to, to, to come in. I, to answer uh, Don's question, I still send out the notice every time to remind them, but it's more to remind them about the meeting and make it easier to find the link when they need it than it is that they um, know that. I've never done it with adding their email address to the list. So I don't know if that changes it at all or not, but um, it's just as easy to send out the note again. A common misunderstanding for people using it for the first time, especially if they're using the free account that runs out at 40 minutes, they think they have to send out a new meeting link. And, and that's not the case. You can always just log in. As, as long as you have your meeting scheduled, you just log, just have everybody click that link again, the same one you sent out to begin with, and there's no need to send out a new link. It's always, it's always the same link as long as you have it scheduled. Yeah, so, it, and I've been in a couple of meetings where it's ended, you just click it and you're back in again. It's not a big deal. So you don't have to buy the subscription plan. We don't get any commission off that either, by the way. <laughs> um, it's just a tool that we've all been using and it's been very helpful. So we're trying to share, share that with you. Tim, it looks like Don has another question. Um, does, does Classroom in Zoom free or, is, or does it come with a non-free subscription? Yeah, I don't understand that question, Don. Do you want to explain that a little bit? Why don't you just unmute and, and ask the question? Oh, okay. Uh, what I'm saying is uh, there are different options that uh, Zoom provides, but uh, it might be only where you are having required to pay for it versus in the free subscription. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so the, the recording is only in the paid version. Um, breakout rooms, is that in the free version? I think it is. Uh, let's... I don't know. I've been. It's been a while since I've been to the free version. I don't remember. Um, and then the webinar, and that's a that's an additional fee already. So that's definitely not in the free section. I've only been on one webinar versus a Zoom, and basically a webinar kind of makes everybody's image go away, and they just kind of are part of the discussion. Um, where you're a presenter and you just present the program. Uh, and you don't get a lot of input from everybody else. That's that's probably the main difference between a webinar and just a flat out Zoom call. And then I think webinars can go up to like a thousand people. It's you get a much bigger group. You definitely wouldn't want a thousand squares <laughs> on your screen. <laughs> so I, I've only I was on a team one that was a webinar, but I've not been on a Zoom one that's been a webinar. So um, pretty much everything comes with the free. Uh, the breakout rooms, I'm not sure of. I don't know if Cortland found that or not, but I don't I'll remember. look that up. So, other questions about the Zoom platform? Any technical questions you guys have? Have people been using Zoom already or haven't used anything yet? Everybody's working good? Okay. We're going to move on to Heather. Heather's got uh, some ideas for activities besides just staring at each other and looking at a bunch of uh, squares on the uh, screen. So Heather, you want to take over the next part? Sure. Who are you calling? Who are you calling squares, by the way, Tim? All of us. <laughs> <laughs> just checking. Just checking. So hi everyone. Um, I'm a I'm a den leader with Pack 251, and I'm the Southern Shores um, Advancement Chairperson. So um, anyway, I've been running um, virtual meetings since March with my my den my seven little lion scouts and um, also with my girl troop 218G. Um, so um, I'd like to give you an example. So, so one thing that I think is really important is, is um, not only we're presenting information and trying to be productive during most of our meetings, but we're also trying to have some fun and get the kids out of their seats and doing some activity. Even virtually we can do this. So one example here, I'm gonna have you all participate. Doesn't that sound great? We're gonna have fun. 
um, a scavenger hunt. So I want everyone to go find me something and, and, and go find me something that you would take on a hike with you. Tim, you too. You got to go find something. I am. I am. I knew you were going to call Go me. find something that you're going to take on a hike and bring it back to show us. What do you got? Addie didn't move very far, but what do you got there? A pocket knife? All right. <laughs> you better have your whittling chip with you, though. <laughs> very nice, Mary. I like it. Bananas. So what do you have? I can't tell what that is. Is that beef jerky? Yes. Okay. okay, we got a hat. Eric, what do you have? A slingshot. That's a walking stick. That's a walking Ooh. stick. Okay, I did think it was a slingshot. Awesome. Mike has a water bottle. It could double. It could double as that. I think Fred's still looking. We'll wait. Or Samantha, what'd you find? Well, anyway, um, so so a scavenger hunt something that oh my gosh, your 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 pack kids, your 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 Cub Scouts, they will do that for an hour straight. We'll just have a whole list of of um, of descriptive words. Um, find me something that's fuzzy. Find me a find me something you take on a hike. Find me something um, that you that you like to eat on a hike. Find me something you can run it as um, as a race. You can run it with a time limit. You can, um, I like to say um, whoever finds the first thing that comes back gets to pick the next thing that everybody has to go find. Lots of different ways you can get the, get the scouts involved in the actual event, but, but it's one way of getting kids out of their seats and doing something, and you can tie it into whatever lesson you're trying to teach. Um, so, so that's one idea. The other one, um, I think for- A knot relay would be another good one. The fastest they can tie the knot and show it on the screen. And show it on the screen. Awesome idea. I haven't thought of that one. That's really good. Um, Fred, Fred has something now he wants to show us. All right. What do you got, Fred? Your Can't plug. <laughs> awesome. Do you want to uh, unmute yourself? We can't hear you, sir. Hold the space bar down. It's my coffee cup. I always bring it. All right. There you go. Good idea. Nice. <laughs> um, an another one I wanted to share with the group. Um, who has done a game of Kahoot with their scout so far? K-O-O-H-O-O-T. Raise your hand. Kahoot? Anyone? Not too many ha hands raised. If you are um, a troop leader, if you have a bunch of high school scouts that you're responsible for, I bet they can teach you how to do this. Um, but it's really easy. It's um, Kahoot. Tim, could you type that into the chat bar for, for us so you can see how that's spelled? <laughs> Essentially, it's an online trivia game. You can either use the, um, the, the question banks that are in place, um, or you can create your own. So for my, for my pack, I had a, a, a night where um, I created, and you can go out there and find mine. There's 25 questions of, of pack level questions. Um, and, and it's a multiple choice question bank. So, so tell me, um, what are you gonna use? This, what's the first thing you're gonna use to start a fire? And you can say, A, wood, B, tinder, um, C, um, kindling, or, or D, um, uh, 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 can of oil, um, and, and see, what they, see what they say. And the cool thing is, is they get the answer through their smartphones or their, their iPads. So you're gonna have typically two devices running, one for the Zoom meeting, and one I'm gonna be sending in my, my trivia answers through my smart device. And the kids know how to use this. All you have to do is set it up. And if I can figure it out, I guarantee you can, because I'm not very bright, to be honest, when it comes to stuff like this. So, um, and, and your high school kids are already doing it in school because the teachers use this all the time for quizzes and things of that nature. So it's, um, I'm actually running one for my whole pack tomorrow night. So I have 30, 30 little Cub Scouts logging into a meeting and I'm gonna run multiple um, multiple trivia um, categories. I'm going to have one that's only scouts and one that's um, little boy 
um, music and one that's one that's sports related and and um, summer activities. And I'm going to award a patch for the winner of each activity. So it's it's a really easy. Um, and that's just a fun night. It, I'm calling it family. I'm calling it um, pack game night. They just they just log in and, and have fun playing the trivia game. And it's just one another way to engage your troop your your troop and your pack um, during this time. And they keep score and they can see how they're doing and they love competing against each other a little bit too. And they love the little technology piece. All right, that's all I got. Those are a couple of ideas for you to run with. If you guys have any questions about how to set it up, I can help. Another one is uh, there's also Jeopardy out there that is typically a Jeopardy style game board that has all kinds of questions. Both Kahoot and Jeopardy both have a, thousands and thousands of pre-programmed ones. You don't even have to do your own. I found a couple Boy Scout ones in Kahoot and Jeopardy um, and we've played those during troop meetings. So you don't, I mean, all you have to do is look for them. You don't have to be creative even, but uh, Heather did hers to be creative because she wanted it more about her what was going on in her pack. So there's a lot of activities. It shouldn't be just a long drawn out meeting type uh, activity here. Uh, there's a lot of different activities they can do. Uh, we've also done during troop meetings, we've done virtual tours through, uh, we did a meeting on cars and we did a virtual tour of a car museum in Detroit. So there are plenty of activities you can do that they get away from the squares. So, um, it's been very helpful for all of us that have been doing it. So we're going to talk a little bit about success stories. Any more, Heather? You were done, right? Yep. Done. Okay. I was just, Tim, I was just going to add that if anybody gets Brian on scouting, Brian on scouting uh, yesterday or the day before posted that elections can now even be done virtually through something like Zoom as well. There is a polling option. I've not gotten it to work well, but there is a polling option that you can do polls and so for elections, both OA elections and troop elections. I know people have done both of them through um, polls. So we're talking a little bit about- in, in fact, our troop just recently did an OA election uh, through Zoom using the polling feature and it worked like a charm. We were able to you know, set up our candidates and uh, explain what OA is about. And uh, we got that out of our way so that now we can plan for uh, the ordeal. Okay, we're going to talk about success stories next, and this is what I, this is the example we're going to use with breakout sessions. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this group and break it in. I don't think it's really in half because it's either Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts, and I believe Corlin has kind of prearranged this based on the answers to the survey you did on the way in or when you registered. But we're going to do some breakout meetings, and uh, and this allows and, and the way to think about this is this would be a great way to do. Um, so if you're doing a pack meeting, you could have as many breakout rooms as you want and throw all your dens in the, their own den meeting or in a troop situation, patrol meetings, and they can have, you know, you could give them a list of things to do and then they come back to the group as a group and they can present it. So it could be a skit, it could be building, designing a troop or a patrol flag or a den flag, or maybe it's some craft they're doing or just a list of ideas of other things they'd like to do. So. I'm going to pass it back to Cortland, who's going to kind of just put us off in our corners. All right. Uh, I'm going to open these up, and I think it'll probably just send you all there if it doesn't. I think so. Yes, yes okay. you did. So now we're going to just open it up for discussion. Um, what kind of questions you have? And I know I have, we had a, one question that I'm going to talk about in our group that I'm going to bring together for everybody here. But, but what other questions do you have about doing virtual? Uh, any concerns, any, any things like that? Um, what are some of the barriers in our group discussion? Uh, there was a discussion about a scoutmaster who was kind of technophobic and didn't want to do things. We talked a little bit about how to get through that, but are there any barriers that you're seeing in your units that are holding you back from doing virtual meetings? Anybody? Anybody? I have barriers and in, in PAC 251, um, I'll share that um, other leaders are not, not as excited about meeting virtually. Um, they have, but I've gotten to a point where I just started scheduling things and started inviting the PAC to them um, personally. So um, if, if other leaders aren't interested, um, if that's, that's how my, my, my game night came out tomorrow night. So I sent an invitation to the PAC and I'm gonna see who shows up, why not? 
Um, and and I hope other leaders follow my example. And I think the adults need just the socialization just as much as the kids do. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of our scouting people are our friends. I mean, I look at my friend list and the, most of them wear a uniform. <laughs> so that socialization and, and that type of thing, that's just as important for the adults as it is for the kids. So be a committee meeting or otherwise, or just shooting a bull and keep catching up on each other's kids or whatever. It's, it's still part of scouting and it's the fun that we have as scouts. So um, don't think it all has to be organized letter to letter, minute to minute. It can be, hey, we're just going to get together and catch up with everybody. And I know some people call it uh, bar time, but that's a different question if it's all about, but you know, everybody grabs a beer and sits down in front of Zoom and talks. I mean, for scouting, I mean, that's, I mean, it's a little mix if there's kids involved, but um, there's an opportunity for socialization. And like I said at the beginning, uh, social distancing is not a fan of scouting because we don't really want a social distance. We just want a physical distance. So I, I think that's one of the biggest misused words is we still need to be social. And we still need to do things together. And, you know, whether they're scouting friends or our next door neighbors at the end of the driveway, it's still pretty important. So what games and activities have people used that we didn't mention? We mentioned Kahoot, we mentioned Jeopardy. Um, what other games and activities have people done that might have worked or didn't work? Hmm. Something one, person, there. one place said, and then you can do a search on this too online, and I did that. Dictionary is very easily can become a Zoom activity. You, you give them a word to draw and they, you know, you can instant message that person through the chat group on the bottom and you can get it, you can give them the, what they have to draw and then everybody has to guess it. Charades could be done easily. Charades is another one. I've done with the, with the little guys, I've done um, things like Simon Says, I've done things like, um, um, it, all my meetings are started with some kind of activity with a parent. We've done the blow the ping pong ball across the table, uh, uh, fight again, you know, thing. Um, um, but um, scavenger hunt's a big one I use a lot because um, the little kids love it. But um, I know there's a unit I spoke with that they did a virtual hike. So everyone started basically on their phones and they were hiking as families um, and telling everyone what they were seeing and what they were doing and, you know, coming back, um, and doing a discussion afterward, but they went on a virtual hike together, but separate. Yep. Uh, we did that once and, uh, I encouraged them all to, um, track their hikes, uh, using some sort of software on their phones to track it. Not only do you get the mileage out of that in case they are working for something like the hiking merit badge, but again, that's an opportunity for them to learn of a way to use a smartphone for something other than games. Um, I may be a little untraditional that way because I try to you know, incorporate that technology into the program uh, rather than stick with the traditional, uh, there's no room for electronics and scouts, but, uh, but this is in a way to get them to uh, be motivated to do some miles because they had to you can't fake it with those apps, so you can't, unless, of course, you get dad to drive you around or something. And we did a kind of a hybrid like that, where we told, we gave them a scavenger hunt, a picture. So picture of a park sign, picture of a, you know, animal track, picture of, you know, and just got them to go out into and do a hike somewhere. You know, one of them was an animal. Was a lot of kids took pictures of their dog because they were taking their dog for a walk. And I mean, it's all their interpretation or an insect or whatever. But it gets them out of the house and away from the screen and gets them out there. And then we share those pictures. We just created a Dropbox and they dropped them in the Dropbox or they just physically, you know, held their phone up to the screen and showed us the pictures they had. It got them out of the house, got them doing something. Um, you know, you could probably do something similar with knots. Here's five knots, tie them and let's see them on screen. You know, you don't have to do them during the meeting, but, you know, if they get their scout book out and they kind of you know, sit down with the scout book and get all five knots tied. And then they have show and tell when they come back to the meeting. Um, keeping them involved and engaged is important. So, you know, I think those kind of things are important. Like Eric said, is it, 
they got out, they did it, but they were probably more than happy to explain what they did to get those pictures or those, you know, that drawing or whatever. So something to think about. One of them was uh, find um, hearts on a window. So they're walking through the street and taking pictures of, you know, people with hearts on their window. Kathy. One of the, I sat in on um, another council's, they had a camp out, a camporee actually. And one of the things they did that was really cool is they did a star hike. So there was one person sitting around the campfire and they had, I don't know how they could do this, but they held their phone up to the sky and shared their screen and were able to show an outline all the different stars and stuff that were up in the sky. So that could be something else that could be done. That's cool. That's there is an app, an app for phone. that. Yeah. yeah. And um, there's a really nice knot tying app that's a 3D top knot tying app. You can do a screen share and then they can see that that not being tied in three dimensional on the screen or two dimensional, um, but they get to see it and then that it helps them tie it. You know, it's not like your your hands are in the way while they're tying it. This is, you know, tying a knot strictly with the knot going in different directions with arrows and colors. And so there's a lot of different opportunities that we probably don't even think about. Like I said, the museum tours. I mean, what are the chances you're gonna get to Detroit, Michigan for a, an auto museum tour? But. Has anyone has anyone checked out the national park um, virtual tours? Um, I our my son's elementary school had an explore day, and and Gabe just happened to be the one who got to do the morning announcements. So I did a whole piece in the morning announcement showing the virtual tours that you you can you literally get to kayak in Alaska and you get to walk on the lava flows in in Hawaii and you get to you get to do the deep sea diving in Florida. Um, so. Um, anyway, that would be a great, a, a great troop meeting to do. Um, Cindy, I see your question here. Does your, your den share a virtual snack at the end of the meeting? I have not done that and I'm going to. Thank you for the suggestion. That's a great idea. Mary, you want to tell them about the troop in uh, Red Arrow, what they did with the s'mores? With the s'mores? Sure. Um, they, they're for one of the very first uh, Zoom meetings, they had um, a campfire program, so, or a campfire. Um, and they had put on the screen, like when you can share something on the screen, they shared a, a picture of a campfire that was going. The scoutmaster actually went around to each um, scout's house and dropped off the makings of a s'more so that the kids could make the s'mores at home. And then when the meeting came on, they could sit around the campfire and eat the s'mores and, and uh, just talk to each other. Anybody else have ideas? <laughs> um, geocaching is another thing people have done virtually. You know, you get out of the house and you hit the ge different geocaches. Someone said that they have done that. A lot of them have treasures and you can take pictures of the box and then what's yep. in the box and then bring that back. And a lot of us, have, a lot of us have done the camp ins. I mean, when we did the national camp in uh, mm -hmm. troop and um, encouraging them to set up that tent in the backyard, um, set up the forts, just just get in some kind of structure and have fun sleeping, sleeping in some kind of fun little tent thing and and then FaceTiming with their friends when they're doing it. I mean, it could be as simple as that just to them continue to engage. But I want to emphasize to the whole group, I talked about the Cubs of engaging your parents. There's frankly, I have a weekly den meeting and I do very little. I just schedule the meeting. But um, one example, I have an electrical engineer um, uh, dad who we were doing the gizmo and gadget lesson and he taught, he taught our scouts how to build an electric motor with a battery and some wire and, 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 a, and a magnet. And all my little five-year-olds got to twist their own little wire and, and, and got, their, got their gizmo to, to spin and it was awesome. Um, but I did nothing. I just asked him, hey, do you think we can come up with an activity? And he's like, sure. So we sent out a supply list. They all came with their supplies and they all put it together with their parents. It was very easy. And I did not accept or schedule the meeting. Um, I think it was at Channel 4. One of, the, one of the news anchors there was doing experiments at home like mini tornadoes with two snow or uh, two water bottles or uh, soda bottles. I mean, that kind of stuff, that gets these kids excited, especially for the younger kids, just to yeah. see that, that whole process and maybe learn a little bit in the process of doing that. But Channel 4 had a whole series of them. I, I only caught a few of them, but they were yeah, all experiments. They were very cool. 
Yeah. I saw some of them. They were very, very neat. And it, she's not on the weather anymore. She moved. Um, but she's got two little kids. So she was doing experiments from her kitchen of different things that you can do with little kids. I think it's, they might have it on their website. Yeah. And who's the science guy? Um, Bill Nye. Bill Nye. I wanted to say Joe Fry. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> But he has, I think, a bunch of stuff too that you can do. You know, whether it's putting a a bottle full of air and a in a you know and it shrinks or grows, whatever it does. I mean, there's a lot of experiments that actually in this environment it's easier because the kids can see it full screen. Where if they're all crowded around a table, they have to look through somebody's armpit or whatever else. So <laughs> another so. thing that the campery did is they um, had a, what they called a mystery food. And they delivered to all of the scouts who signed up for this campery a mystery food. And each of the scouts had to incorporate cooking that mystery food into a meal. And then they had to show it or take a picture of it and share it. And it was goldfish. Oh. So you, go, let me rephrase that, Mary. Goldfish crackers. Thank you. <laughs> That's like, oh, no. <laughs> no. Goldfish. Crackers, and it was really cool to see some of the things that they used goldfish for to make. Some used it as like croutons in their salad. Some used it as broke it all up and crunched it up and used it like breading on chicken. Um, it was just really cool to see all the creative ways that they could use a package of goldfish crackers to um, incorporate into a meal. So you could even do something chef like competition. That. Sure, that is really cool. You can do that at any of any age level. Yep. So Iron Chef would be another one where you just give them a bunch of ingredients and they have to come up with something or they cook something and record it and then they show everybody what it is. The only downside to that meeting is when you get done, you're so hungry, you have to go find something to eat. Tim, there are no samples. Did you share the website yet? Um, I was very excited to hear that Mike used my slide deck um, that I presented at the first meeting. Um, so he used my material actually. So um, now I'm encouraged to post some more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll talk um, about this open space that we have set up. Um, there was one other question we had in our group and that's mini excursions as we kind of transition from all virtual to somewhere in between all in person and as we you know, slowly test the waters and see how things go. Um, somebody in our group asked about what are some mini excursions people are going to do maybe this summer to get outside and get some activities. And I think we mentioned some, but does anybody else have any other ones that might be worthwhile mentioning? I'll throw one out there as um, any hike at any state park is one, for instance. But I also think Adventure Rock does a one day rock climbing at Devil's Lake, which could be a possibility that you would drive out there in the morning, get there at nine o'clock, do a rock climbing thing, and then be back home that night and don't have to worry about camping and cooking and everybody could bring their own food and you don't have to worry about contamination, that type of thing. Um, that would my, be another um, one. My den chief is um, invited the pack, the whole pack to um, a fishing derby at his, his family lives on a pond and that's stocked. And um, he's going to provide instruction to all the cubs and worms. And, um, and uh, he actually has, I guess the property has canoes and things like that. So we have to worry about safety afloat and things like that if we use them. But anyway, we're, we're just gonna, it's a local Oak Creek, um, Oak Creek pond that we're just gonna go fishing for the day. Um, uh, actually, actually, it's gonna be an, an after work event. So it's gonna be during our normal PAC meeting and um, in July. So we'll, some parents are gonna be comfortable coming, some are not, and we're just gonna put it out there for those who are. And the one thing with fishing is you really can still do the social distancing by just standing farther apart on the lake. I mean, it's, as we look at events that we're gonna do with our troop, we're looking at things that still can be together, but apart. So like a bike outing, they're not really six feet from each other unless you're running into each other. And then, you know, at the end of the meeting, we'll just kind of enforce keeping somewhat separated. But we're looking at things, especially in the first part, what do we want to do that's going to be keep them distance? Another one, and I know Heather's into this, but uh, either canoeing or kayaking, uh, River Bend and Racine has kayaks to rent. $25 for three hours. 
So that's two scouts in a canoe, and they're going to split that $25. And I bet if you call Dave Shapiro at Riverbend Nature Center, he'll give you a break because he's a, he's, a, he's a scout leader. So um, that's the then, price. But if you see your scout group, I bet he'll give you a deal. And then I'd also like to uh, throw a little advertisement here for our own camps. Camp Dakota and IMR both have canoes and kayaks available. Um, I don't know if we've come up with a true rental night plan by the night plan. I know we have a weekend plan, but I, I think I think Wally was working on that, wasn't he, Cortland? And he's working on all sorts of stuff for camp right now. I'm sure it's on the list. But fishing, fishing at Otakota is good. Um, uh, you're not going to catch anything super big, but I will tell you the kids have a lot of fun catching the little stuff as much as they do the big stuff. So catch and release is fine. I, I was out at Otakota. What's the weekend program? I, I don't know anything about this. What weekend? There is no you weekend. You said program. you can rent on the weekend? Oh, they do. We do offer canoe rental and kayak rental from both of our camps. It's not very well advertised, though. How, how do you get a hold of this? How do you, who do you contact? Katie Schneider would be okay. that, Cortland? I believe so, yeah. You can rent a whole trailer, so six or seven on trail, or take as many trailers. Otakota, I think, has two trailers. And I think IMR has two or two, maybe three. Yeah. But it's more than you're going to need. Um, they also have kayaks available and paddles. Um, life jackets, I believe, are available, but some you might want to bring some of your own. But, um, and I've mentioned this to Ranger Chris out at Otakota. This is a prime time because people just want to get out and away from home. And that's, that's still social distancing, um, you know, sit out on a kayak in the middle of the lake or a canoe. I can't think of any more social distancing than that if you're in family groups. So mom and son or dad and son. And so keep that in mind as well. Other short-term events. Does anybody else have any other ideas? I have one. Uh, if I uh, Up in West Bend, they have a county park that's up in the uh, uh, and they have a contour map where you can do orienteering and they've got about eight spots that they have set up. And one night uh, before the coronavirus, when we got together, I was showing them how to use the compass and then they measured all the angles and stuff off of this map. And we went up there during the winter time and hit uh, the different eight points that they had and it came out to be five miles that we got done with but you know there was one mile that's required for them to go through orienteering now my question here is some of us may not want to go all the way up to west bend is there a orienteering course in the local area within racine kenosha uh, counties rick do you know of one rick smith did your troop do one Okay. Um, I know there was one for Otakota, um, but I will also tell you that there is a compass game that used to be available through scouting. I don't know if it still is. And you would mark off every five feet on a rope and put it on a north-south direction. And there was all kinds of cards you would get. And you would start at like 0.5, go this direction, that direction, and that direction. And you would come back to a number on the rope. So it really could be set up in any open field. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's still available, but you might look for that. But it was a, you really could probably design your own by just using a protractor, and just come, you know, measuring it out and, and coming up. So you would, you would start on ten and you would end on three, or you would start on, and it, and I see Fred shaking his head, so he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's the one that we I. I took them up there at the Kettle Moraine area because the contour map, it's really, you know, very, uh, you know, you don't have too many places in this area that you can see a lot of contour and see hills here and there, and then you can point out in locations, and then it has a little uh, pond or something, or a Kettle Moraine, as you want to call it, the kettles. But, uh, they were able to see it off on the map and get an idea as to where they're oriented. But it's got, uh, you know, like a post that they 
pounded down and it's got a number on it. And uh, so when they go from one point to the next, then they have to decide what angle they have to go and what the degrees and stuff and how many steps that they have to go. But it was really a nice uh, little course that they have. In fact, they go to the courthouse there. They give you out the, the compasses that you need as well as the map. So it, it was really well organized, you know, in that regard. So that's what I took them up in. Then after, at that time, we went to uh, that uh, pizza ranch afterwards. They were really happy about that. <laughs> Sometimes feeding them is more important than doing the activity. Yeah. Here we go. I'm going to screen share here. I found this online. This is what I was talking about. Um, did that share or not? Do you see my other screen? Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's an east west. I was wrong. I thought it was a north south. But this is just a compass game. You lay it out east to west. You set, uh, it's 100 feet long, so they can pace the rope to get their paces. And then from one end of the rope, and then there's a 1 to 20 number on it. And then these individual cards give, you start at 2 and then where you end. So it's a, I'll, um, we'll throw this up in that, uh, the shared document folder that we're going to talk about in a minute. So that, that would be fine. A football field works great for this. You put it out in the middle of the football field. You don't have any obstacles. If you want obstacles, there's nothing wrong with doing obstacles, but that's a, that would be a great day activity. Um, you know, they could still somewhat social distance that way especially if it's a family unit that's doing the course, you know, they're going to be looking over each other's shoulders, but every group's going to have their own starting point. What other uh, activities can people think of that would be good as we transition from one to the other? And, and in this example, you could talk about orienteering in a virtual meeting and how to read a compass and how to read two degrees and then use a practical out in the field type experience. So, it kind of blends the two together. I really like that idea of like, th this is a really good way of um, teaching everybody and having everyone's attention in the front of a, a screen. Uh, we use this in business all the time, um, webinar where, where you're teaching a concept um, or maybe you're going over the key points of how to prepare for a camp out or, or how to prepare for a hike or whatever, and then you go do it. So the pre-meeting potentially is, is, a great, is a great option, I think. And there is another good opportunity at the back, by the way. Another good opportunity might be uh, space exploration because uh, scouts would be able to build a model rocket to then get together as a group and still maintain social distance and launch their rockets. And they do make some rocket kits that you can buy 20 at a time. They're all the same. They could stop by and pick it up or you could drop it off at their house and they could build it with their parents or whatever and then or on their own depending what age they are and then launch them and they all love launching rockets and chasing them through the field if you're going to do it at camp though make sure you get permission before you just start doing it <laughs> i know it's, i know chris has had that experience a few times he just likes to make sure the area is clear and stay away from airports by the way <laughs> any other uh, activities that would be helpful that way as we're trying to transition here. And I know Mary mentioned it and we mentioned it in our scout PSA group, just ways to kind of transition back into the real world here. We talked about doing a highway cleanup. This would be a good time of year to get out and clean up the roads that we're responsible for. It'd be a socially distant activity you could do with the unit. Yep. Uh, not, not just roads, but um, Milwaukee County Parks, for instance, I've been watching some, if you have those of you who are on next door, you hear a lot of complaints about the parks because they're not in very good shape. Well, it turns out Milwaukee County Parks that normally runs with 900 seasonal workers is only working with 200 seasonal workers this year. So you can only guess that they're working hard, but they have very little to work with. So the local parks aren't looking very good right now. Um, getting scouts out to do some cleanup in parks um, and other, other um, activities that are service-based. You know, many of them still need especially the younger ranks need some service hours and uh, you combine fresh air 
and service and cleaning up your local park. I think that's kind of a win-win-win. It's worth exploring. Um, you know, our, our troop actually gets approached pretty often for help on a variety of things. And, um, and what I'm trying to do is collect up small things that small teams can do. So one or two families at a time can be kind of dispatched, if you will. Um, make sure they're wearing at least class B so that they do represent, um, but then they can go out and they can do good in the community without having to be in a giant group of people, so. And one of our, one of the kids in our neighborhood here was for his baseball team, not a scout group, but he, he went out and handed out uh, cards that said, hey, next Sunday or next Saturday, I'm gonna pick up food. If anybody wants to put food on their back porch, I'm gonna take it over to the Veterans Outreach Center. I mean, that could be another opportunity, especially seeing we haven't done scouting for food this year because that kind of kicked off this whole COVID thing. Um, so, you know, if there's a, if you're a local church pantry or whatever, or maybe you maybe your chartered organization's pantry is a little low, that might be a good opportunity for a family to go out and hit the neighborhood that they're in. And then, you know, if you have 10 or 15 kids, that's 10 or 15 neighborhoods that kind of get hit up. Um, I don't know if there are any concerns, Cortland, about the COVID in relationship to that or? Um, I, you know, I, I, we've seen a lot of other scouts, a lot of other organizations doing something like that. Um, you know, when I think about our scouting for food drive, uh, we still fully intend to do it. Um, as large a scale as we as we do in this council, uh, it, it's kind of funny that when we talked to Feeding America, they said, hold off for now. We're, we're really more worried about being able to fund everything we do. So they were really focused more on the fundraising and the food, but local church pantries, uh, local food pantries, um, I think, you know, maintaining the social distancing practices, all that stuff, uh, being aware of, of the people you're serving and if they're at higher risk, you know, and, and making sure to avoid any type of, of, you know, direct contact or anything like that. Um, I think that's, you know, especially as we get, you know, past, past Friday and into, you know, kind of what's going on locally. I, I, I don't see any, I don't see any hang up there. Yeah, just think about protection if you want to have the kids wearing rubber gloves or something like that. I would also make sure your food pantry is accepting before you went out and did it. Yes, big, big time. So yeah. just, you know, if it's your church or whatever, make sure you make sure you get that clear before you end up with a pickup truck full of food and they turn you away. <laughs> um, another idea would also be um, one of our units in Red Arrow, they had contacted the, uh, the Veterans Outreach and um, they had put it out there there's a food drop-off site, here we go. And they had a truck and people just drove through and filled that truck up. And then they took the truck to the Veterans Outreach. So the kids could conceivably, you know, put those papers or say, you know, through the people's doors in their neighborhood, just to say, hey, take your food, whatever you have, instead of us picking it up, they could come and drive through if, if you have an issue like that. The and I've often thought, why don't we just hand out cards as people are walking in the grocery store, they can buy the food when they're in the store and then hand it to the truck when they leave. <laughs> That's an idea too. That's an idea too. I'm sure the grocery store would appreciate the added business. Yeah. <laughs> you have the food on the shelf. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going in the grocery store and you buy, you know, X number of things, as long as you don't steal all the rice and toilet paper, we should be right. good. Yeah. <laughs> Bre breeding, breeding cards for nursing homes is another one all these yeah. folks are still on lockdown and and they're not getting the human contact they really need so such an easy way for for a cub or, or any level scout to to help out um just organize a night that everyone's going to make a bunch of whole bunch of homemade greeting cards and send them to a nursing home they'd love it so do we want to talk about the shared space, Cortland? Is that you? Yes. Let's. Uh, we'll. Um, so for um, hopefully most of you have seen or visited or done something uh, with our scouting at home page. But let me pull that up real quick. Um, if you go to, I, I wanted to go straight to it because there's a bunch of stuff that plays, uh, videos that play on our site and. Uh, I think I've heard them about 14,000 times, so I'll just You're bring just mad because they're you and you're tired of listening to yourself. There's that. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to bring you straight to our scouting at home page. Um, since, you know, in the last two and a half months from the time we started it to where it's at today, I think it's improved quite a bit. Um, you know, a lot more content and, and access there. But a few of the things that I just want to make sure that each of you know are out there. 
So we've done um, some trainings and, and we've actually done, this is our third fireside chat. Uh, you'll see here there's a big gray box for the 14th. I thought we had recorded the 14th, but we didn't. Uh, something went screwy that day and that, that was a day that Zoom was not having, having its ordinary. best days. It was ordinary so, that day. But this one is recording, so we'll post this meeting uh, there where May 14th will change it to June 10th. But um, you know, we, we've recorded some stuff for people to, able to be able to view. If you look at this Den and Troop Leaders uh, file sharing, uh, the first one we did, I'll click on this real quick. Um, several of our moderators had different um, meeting plans and things like that that they've got. These are all available and downloadable. Uh, and you can also, if you've got meeting plans that you want to share, you can upload stuff uh, there as well. Uh, it's, it's open for anybody and everybody to access to uh, add stuff to or or uh, download stuff for their own use. Um, so there's just a few sample meeting plans. I think Tim mentioned some of his uh, in the breakout. Um, I know there's a couple of things there from Heather uh, as well. So there's there's a lot of there's some resources there to start with, uh, but feel free to you know continue to add to that. Um, with that scouting at home page, um, all our weekly challenges we've been doing since uh, mid-April. We've posted those here. Uh, we've got a lot of different resources uh, that are scouting related um, and also just kind of uh, world museums. I think, Heather, you had mentioned uh, national, national parks tours, uh, virtual tours that you had had. I think we've got somewhere in here uh, at least some, some nat national park tours, uh, but just a lot of different stuff that people can use and, and engage in. in uh, augment their programs with uh, virtually all of the online merit badges and Weeblo's uh, adventure clinics that we've had. Uh, we have those on this page as well as um, we have them on our front page um, and under the upcoming events here. So a lot of different that file sharing real quick. What's that? Go back to the file sharing real quick. Sure. There we go. So well, while Cortland was talking, I already threw up this compass game. So that's how quick and easy it is to add stuff or get stuff. So feel free to add stuff. This is really, you know, we just threw these things up here because it was a group of us that were doing it that kind of said, hey, here's some stuff. Uh, we haven't had a whole lot of extra, uh, extra things to do here. So feel free to add it. All you have to do is hit the upload and it, it's quick and easy. And we don't all have to reinvent the wheel if we can share each other's wheels. So, make sure uh, you disinfect the wheels before you share them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I send it through the spam filter. <laughs> All right. Um, any more questions or anything from any of our presenters tonight? That uh, other than we need to give Rick a congratulations because he's got a bunch of balloons behind his head, and I've been wondering what they're for. <laughs> yeah. So, congratulations, Rick. Whatever that's for. You're still muted. Hold the space bar. I can't unmute you, sorry. Yeah. Hold the space bar down. You gotta hold it down. Still can't hear you. <laughs> there, there we go. All right. Yep. At the end of May, I retired from work, so. Well, oh, congratulations. Yay. More time for scouting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have owned the commission or something, Cortland. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> so if there are no further questions, I'd just like to thank everybody for being here tonight. I hope you gained something. I know some of you are repeat customers, and that's great. Um, we are all here to share those. Uh, there are several of us presenters, but there's a few others that are, have been helping. Um, I'll get to you in a minute, Mike. And um, we are more than welcome or more than happy to help you if you're having problems getting on the Zoom, getting Zoom or ideas. Or if you want to just sit in a den meeting with Heather and play the games tomorrow night, she's going to be doing that. I'm sure she'll take, as long as you don't steal all the answers, she'll let you play. <laughs> <laughs> But all of us, some of us have troop meetings that are still um, going on. If you want to be part of those, uh, we're all more than happy to help you. Uh, we feel there's a big, pretty strong importance for 
keeping scouting moving through, even if it's through virtually, and keeping in contact with not only our scouts, but our scouting families and our extended family through, um, you know, district and council wide stuff too. So uh, thank you everybody for coming. Mike, you had a question. Yeah, so, um, you know, we're, we're, like you said, we're transitioning out of this virtual and, you know, kind of dabbling into to being in person. Uh, we have all of our scouts that are still waiting for awards, you know, for the final, uh, the ending of our, our, our Cub Scouts for this, se this season. And, um, you know, then the rank advancements, changing the neckerchiefs and all that sort of thing. So it's like, you know, the celebration. Uh, at what point can we do that, you know, and how can we, how, how can we do that? Is, is it possible to do it in a park to, to, to have everybody, you know, separate by, separated by family, bring them up one at a time? I mean, what are your thoughts on all that? I'll let Cortland answer, Cortland or Mary answer that. So here, here you know, right, at, right now, um, you know, we're still until the 12th, which is Friday, um, you know, asking units not to meet face to face after that. Right. Um, you know, our guidance is to really follow your local um, health departments, um, you know, and, and if things change, obviously be, be aware of those. Uh, we do not as a council have a single blanket policy for, for everybody um, because uh, so much is, is now by municipality or county or something like that. Uh, and so I think, you know, for, for purposes of, of what you're looking at doing, take a look at, you know, what your local municipalities and health departments say. Uh, you might want to consult with your chartered organization to see if, if they have some different guidelines or, or, or thoughts for how to do that. Um, you know, and, and if a, if a face-to-face -face or, or, or a face-to-face uh, -face meeting is an option there, you know, just make sure that you're following, you know, the CDC, the Wisconsin Department of Health and, and other local health department guidelines, you know, to, to make sure that, you know, we're, we're, we're doing our best to maintain the safety and, and health of, of all our participants. Um, and, and so that, that's, that's, that's where we're going to be at least for the coming period of time. Unfortunately, I, I, I can't tell you what that period of time is going to be. Um, but that's, that's kind of where we're at right now, uh, moving forward. And if there are things that change either to loosen future restrictions because COVID kind of goes away, or if, if there are things that change because, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, that, that second surge or spike that people talk about that, you know, we have to, you know, kind of tighten things back down. Then when those things happen, we'll react, um, with the safety and the health of our scouts, uh, our leaders, uh, our staff in mind, first and foremost. And Mike, I'm, I'm going to give you a Mike? personal experience, and then I know Eric has a personal experience. You bet. <laughs> so what we did for our uh, scouts court of honor is we got all the awards done, and Kathy Anderson, who's on here, she got them all packaged for us, and then we secretly got a hold of the parents and gave all the awards to the parents. And then we did a Zoom meeting and the kids didn't know that their parents had the awards and they were presented the award. They were just like a regular court of honor. They were called forward and then their parents already had the patch. And we did a game where we like passed it to the side of the screen and the parent grabbed it from the sky of the screen. And I think the kids appreciated getting that stuff. And then Eric has another experience that I know you're talking more about Weeblos crossover and stuff. And Eric has an experience I know I want to talk about. Well, we we also you know were concerned about our Cub Scout pack and having them do exactly Mike what you're currently kind of concerned about, and uh, it takes a little planning. But what we did, and we started this a while ago. So uh, under the conditions as they're evolving, I think there's a way to do a hybrid here. We set up a sign up genius and gave every Scout family you know a five minute slot, and set up the bridge, set up flags, and they came in. They crossed over, they got their awards, they got a cookie, they got out of there. And the, one of the um, scout um, parents, the Cubs got parents, has a lot of video gear. He recorded it all and is gonna stitch together the video later. Now that we can start meeting in small groups perhaps, maybe bringing your whole troop together, your whole pack together, might exceed the 50 limit, might exceed your local limits. But if you do it by den, for instance, you set up in an area where you've got the necessary infrastructure 
and welcome folks in in waves, uh, you can achieve a lot of that, take some nice pictures, and, uh, and whether you stitch that together in a, just a photo album or a video, or you know, that, that's up to what you're capable of in your pack. But by spacing it out over time, uh, it provided the opportunity for all the boys to get their awards, um, for them to cross over to their next den. Uh, you know, and I was helping, of course, because we had three, three scouts cross over to our troop. So uh, that worked out really well. And uh, of course, a couple of dads, including myself now, have, have some video editing to do. And I know that not everybody has that capability, but you can also just take pictures and make a slideshow out of it too. Sure. But need, needless to say, you know, you get to sit there longer because you stretch out the length of the event. Um, but then as the families come and go, uh, they, uh, they can feel comfortable that they're not in a giant crowd. Uh, in fact, the one anecdote I've got is a lot of the kids are doing really great wearing masks. The parents have got them trained and, and it was a little tough to get them to take the mask off for the crossover. We were all 10 and 15 feet away with our cameras. We're like, okay, it's safe to take your mask off now. We'd love to see your smiling face as you cross the bridge. You know, and, and they're like, really, I, I, can, I can do that? You know, and then they'd put it in their pocket. They'd go over the bridge, take a nice portrait of them. And they'd, they'd snap their mask back on and go for the cookies. So the uh, question comes up, is videoing against BSA policy, how'd you get through that? <laughs> um, that's a good question. I'm gonna have to ask. Um, maybe we're gonna make a slideshow of that on the record. I don't know, Carla, do you have any comments? You know, so here's, I guess, um, I mean, there, there's a few different ways to look at this, you know, it, it are, if if we as as the unit uh, or you know the, the the scouting organization are 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 videoing that we probably shouldn't be doing that. Um, we we can't stop mom or dad or grandma or grandpa from pulling their phone out and videoing their son or daughter First doing time. the crossover. Um, you know that's that's their family. I, I that's 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 their choice. I, I don't see any issue with that. Um, but, um, as far as making, as far as taking a video of that, we probably shouldn't be doing that, but like what Eric's talking about with the stills, uh, mm -hmm. uh, out of, you know, from, from photography and then maybe creating a, a slideshow that you could share. I, that, that I think is, that would be permissible. Um, if you think about, uh, during fall recruitment, you know, one of the things we do encourage our Cub Scout packs to do is, is have you know, pictures and, and if they want to build it into a, a PowerPoint slideshow video that they can that they can show at the school open house or at other things that they're at that kind of show people who aren't in scouting what they do in their Cub Scout pack. We encourage people to do that. So it, yes and no. Um, it just depends on what the context of the video is and, and, and how you're using that. Doesn't but it also it, depend on more if, if I mean, if you're public posting it on YouTube and, and Facebook, it's a lot different than if it's just for the, for an exclusive group of people in your unit. And I think if right. you communicate to the unit beforehand that you're doing it, if anybody has an objection, then they can just say, I don't want my kid to be pictured here. And, and I know yeah. there are situations where, you know, especially in separated families where they may not want the video of, you know, I, I have a niece or a nephew that has adopted a child and they don't want any videos out there of the adopted child because it, you know, they're still working on the adoption process. So I fully understand you know, keeping that part of it secret or, or not public, I shouldn't say. All but the point. kid still deserves the recognition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so oh. I, just, I just joined, I just um, shared my email address. If there is anyone interested in joining my Kahoot meeting tomorrow night, I is once you see how it works, you can it's it's pretty obvious how easy it is. Um, so if you just want to join for the first half or the whole time, you're you're welcome. Um, what time is your meeting tomorrow? Uh, it's at six thirty, um, and it's a bunch of little little Cub Scouts, so it's going to be super fun. Um, but uh, but anyway, um, if if you're interested, to shoot me an email, and I'll share the meeting link that way. I, I don't want to share it publicly. And then there's one thing.